So today I want to talk to you about uh, a topic I'm really passionate about, uh, the glory of God. Because uh, I've been in places where uh, God's glory falls and then uh, people start getting delivered from demons. Uh, people start getting healed with no one laying hands on them. And some of the most dramatic transformations in people's lives have came through, through the manifest presence of God or the glory of God. But what is the glory of God? Uh, you know, in, in Hebrew, it's called the kabod or kabod of God, which is the weightiness of God. But uh, you see in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 5, uh, verse 13, 13 and 14, you know, the worshipers are worshiping God and they're, they're praising God. And then uh, it's God's glory comes down like a cloud and it fills the house of, the, of God. And all of a sudden the priests and the, they, they can't continue to minister because the glory and the manifest presence is so thick there. Uh, throughout the whole uh, Torah, you have... Um, God leading Moses through this pillar of cloud and this pillar of fire, and they would follow the glory of God. And it's amazing because uh, in Exodus um, chapter 16, or is it? yeah, Exodus 16, you know, uh, they're, they're complaining, they're grumbling about not having food to eat. And, and all of a sudden God says, uh, in verse 7, uh, Moses says, you will see the glory of the Lord. And then uh, verse 10, it talks about they beheld the glory of the Lord appearing like a cloud and it manifested quail and it manifested manna and they, it, it basically brought provision. Well, the, one of the names of the Lord is I am the Lord who provides. So here's something interesting about the glory of God. You see the name of God, the provider, manifesting through the glory of God. You know, Exodus chapter 33. Uh, it's, so they would uh, basically they would follow that cloud and then when the glory of God would stop, they would set, set up the tabernacle meeting and that's the place people would go to meet with God. You know, um, it, it says verse seven on, it talks about Moses took his tent, pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp and called it the tabernacle meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle meeting, which is inside the camp. So this is the meeting place of God. Now check this out. It says, and it came, in verse nine, and it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. So God, this presence of God would just usher in. As soon as Moses went in this tabernacle, the glory of God would just come, and the presence of God would come, and and God would like he would talk with God. And I love in verse, you know. Verse 10, it talks about all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing in the tabernacle door. So it was a visible thing. And all the people rose and worshiped each one in his tent. So the response of seeing the glory of God to these people was worshiping God. Uh, it said, so the Lord spoke with Moses face to face as man would speak to his friend. So in this, in this manifest presence of God, uh, God would speak to Moses, you know, and he considered that friendship. That was a place where Moses would hear from God. You know, um, skip forward. Uh, Moses is saying, God, like if I've found favor in your sight, who are you going to send with us? Because we, we have a promised land to take and you haven't even revealed who you're going to send with us to take it. He's looking for that prophet to rise up or he's looking for God to raise up somebody to take this place. But God said, I love God's response in verse 14. He says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Wow, so what's God saying? He's saying, guess what? I myself am going to be the one who goes with you, and I'm going to take you into the promised land. And Moses' response is, uh, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that, to your people that I found grace in your sight, except you go with us, so we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. It's amazing because in, in this time, like everybody had their idols that they would worship, but none of them actually did anything, you know, no, none, none would speak, none, they were lifeless. But, but Moses is saying, we're separate, we're different because we have God himself with us. It's the presence of God. It's the presence of God that separated Israel from all the nations, from all the rest of the world. And I believe it's also the presence of God that separates believers from every other person on the planet. You know, and then in verse 18, he said, please show me your glory. So he's saying, look, show me your glory. I want to see more, God. I want to see more of you. Then he said, and I will make all my goodness pass before you. 
I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and I will be gracious to whom I am gracious. I will have compassion on whom I will compassion, have compassion. Wow, think about that. He's saying like, like all, look, he's saying, God, I want to see your glory. And God's like, okay, I will show you all my goodness and I'll proclaim my name to you. It's who I am. Uh, uh, the glory of God always brings the expression of who God is. You see, God is good. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a savior. So when the presence of God, like the glory of God comes, it, it causes that effect where all of a sudden people get healed. People who are in bondage or oppressed by the devil start getting set free. Chains start breaking, you know. Uh, the this is, it's the manifestation of the goodness of God. Now, then they would follow the cloud and they, to meet with God, you would go to that tabernacle. But something amazing happened in the New Testament. That glory now is resting in a human being. It's resting in Jesus Christ. Where Jesus came, you know, it said the word, which the word word is logos, the expression of God. It's like it's it's how God expresses himself. And it says that word became flesh and we beheld his glory in John chapter one. So he's saying, look, there's there's this glory that that is manifest in a person that this person is actually the expression of God on the earth. And it's amazing. So in John chapter two, you know, Jesus turns water to wine. And in verse 11, it says these beginning signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and the disciples believed in him. So the, these beginning signs, it's not just talking about the wine, turning water to wine, but the miracles he like the miracles he's doing is a manifestation of his glory because he's carrying the Holy Spirit and within him, he's carrying the indwelling presence of God. God. Isn't that amazing? Because it, right here it says the, the response was the disciples believed in him. They saw the glory of God on him, you know? Um, it, it's amazing because, you know, all throughout John, you see this picture of glory coming. And then even when uh, Lazarus died and Jesus came there and Mary's crying, Jesus tells him, did I not tell you if you believed you would see my glory? And then he raises Lazarus from the dead. That's a, a visual representation of his glory. You can see that prophetic picture in Isaiah 35 where it talks about the deaf hearing and the lame walking and, and waters being coming out of a dry place because Jesus promises rivers of living water flowing out of our bellies. You know, this is, it's, it's an incredible picture, but now you have God in man. And he gave us the Holy Spirit, which is amazing. It's God himself. In John chapter 14, you know, he says that, uh, verse 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So he's promising the disciples this relationship shift where, where God's upon them. That's why the disciples throughout the, the gospels are doing the works of miracles because God's presence is upon them. God himself is upon them. It's the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God himself with us. So, but he's saying this is going to be in you. Now, John chapter 17 is kind of like one of those mind-blowing passages to wrap your head around, you know. But it says, uh, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their, through their word. So he's praying for the disciples. He's saying, I'm not just praying for the disciples, but I'm praying for you, the, the person watching this who who's going to believe, you know, through their word, through the testimony of this book. They believe what God's saying. And check this out. It says, and that they may be one as you, Father, in me, and I and you that they may be one in us that they are one in us wow it's kind of like Jesus saying if you've seen me you've seen the father now he's inviting us into that relationship where we deny ourselves and we take on him and he changes us into the glory of God into the image of God in into Christ you know but but he's changing us to where people see us they see him and in that place says the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you have given me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. Wow. So he's saying the glory that I have, the, this, the, like he carries the glory of God, the pre manifest presence of God. Uh, he's saying, I carry that. That's why throughout the gospels, you see demons screech out when he's preaching from across the way, multitudes getting healed. Like, like it's the glory of God manifesting the goodness of God. And he's saying this same glory I'm giving to my church. I'm giving to those who believed in me. And when they come together and they're one as we are one, guess what? This glory is going to manifest. It's, 
it's a promise. That's why it says in Ephesians that we're being built together to form a, a temple of the living God or a, a temple, a gathering place. Here, let me get to that passage real quick. Ephesians. Ah, here it is. Chapter two. Here we, ah, here we are. Check this out. It says, in whom the whole building being fit together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. That's Ephesians 2, 21 and 22. So it's saying we're being built together to be a dwelling place of God. We're being built together so the presence of God is, is amongst us. So what that's saying is, guess what? In the Old Testament, there's a tabernacle meeting they built up. In the New Testament, believers gather together, carry the glory of God. That's the place God's glory land on. When we're together in unity, worshiping God, when we're praising God in one accord, all of a sudden God's glory comes. And it's in that place that things just happen. Things start changing. Um, like I, man, this, it's Jesus. So one thing I, the reason why I'm going over this topic is, um, you know, I was, I was flying on a plane to Indonesia, uh, back from Indonesia, and I had a vision about uh, God was just highlighting this topic of the glory. And I, I believe what's coming up right now is that there's going to be a merge of the glory of God and evangelism and giftings and the presence of God, you know, like like it's going to come together to where when we go out and we start praying for the sick and seeing God's kingdom come and we start uh, preaching the gospel, God's glory is going to fall and whole we're going to see whole areas start to change. Uh, this is an area also like um, I have never been more attacked over this area uh, than this right here because the devil is completely freaked out over this topic. I remember I went to Randy Clark's healing school. And he invited the Holy Spirit and the glory fell in that healing school. And then all of a sudden you have 20 people crawling on the ground, slithering like snakes, getting screaming uh, because the glory of God is actually causing a deliverance and they got set free from demons. And then you had spontaneous healings breaking out. You know, we've had times where we've actually witnessed on the streets and then all of a sudden God's glory just hit someone and they're like, they get healed from something that they didn't even pray for, you know, but I just want to share that. And so, Father, I just bless everybody who's watching this right now in the name of Jesus. I ask right now, God, that you bless them. Holy Spirit, that you touch them, Father. I ask right now that you release your glory over them, that they would experience you, God. If there's any devil that's holding on to them in Jesus' name, go. I thank you, God, for releasing healing in their bodies, whatever they need healing, God, and let them have an impartation of passionate love for Jesus, God, that your glory would touch them in such a way that they cannot be satisfied without more of you in Jesus' name. I know Jesus is always in the mood to break chains. That's not a seasonal thing, that's a <laughs> everyday thing.